Welcome you all video of evolutionary software process method. In this evolutionary process model, uh, it's mainly based on the iteration based method. It helps to create a complex versions of a software. The evolutionary process model has been classified into a prototyping model, spiral model and a concurrent development model. And this is a rapid prototyping model often referred to as an adaptive software development because based on the customer requirement, we can able to modify its versions. So is the customer feedback that is helps to use to develop or refine the prototype has been used for uh, testing the prototype by the customer. Then it has been handed over to the customer for their valuable feedback. So in this model, first we define the objectives required for establish the prototypes based on the objectives. We can define the prototype functions after defining the functions, then it uh, helps to develop the prototype model after developing the prototype model we can evaluate its performance so the characteristics always involve with the requirement phase and then the evaluation is made by the customer sometimes they provide a negative feedback means automatically it can be discarded certain modifications should be made provide a valuable product to the customer this type of prototyping have for defining the requirements needed at the time we can use them with the help of the waterfall model Next type is spiral based model uh, dealing with the shortcomings in the traditional waterfall method. So during the risk analysis, it identifies the potential risk and uh, planning has been made based on the strategy. Can we proceed each phase by the alternatives of the method or by studying the risk analysis involved in that model? Each phase has been followed with the help of the evaluation procedure and planning phase. Simplified spiral model. First stage, we clearly determine the objectives and find the alternate solution to that problem. Then, risk has been resolved after identifying it. So, we have to develop a new version based on the identification. Finally, we can review and plan for the next phase of the software process. Full spiral model with many loops. So, the exact number of loops of the spiral is unknown and can vary from project to project. So this model supports a risk handling and the project is delivered in loops and each loop of the spiral is called a phase of the software development process. So when to use this spiral methodology techniques? So when the project is a large one, how to create a prototypes and when the risk and cost evaluation is very important aspect and we can applicable this methodology for medium to high risk projects and when requirements are unclear and complex. Advantages can be the changes can be done even at the later stages. So the cost estimation also becomes very easy. Uh, repeated development helps to eliminate the risk management and uh, development is very fast will compare to other methods as it gets customer feedback at uh, every phases. Um, drawbacks also sometimes uh, the schedule time and the budget which has been predefined Sometimes they have not been met. While working for the large projects, it re required a high risk assessment expertise in their team. And also the protocol needs to be followed very strictly. The documentation between every phases is a very important one. So the next method is this uh, agile process model. Here this agile method breaks the task into smaller iterations or parts that do not directly involve lifetime planning. Here it involves with the philosophy and the development guidelines should encourage the satisfaction of the customers and it should be motivated the project teams and the work products should be minimal in range and the overall development should be in a simple manner. Several guidelines should be developed. There is a stress delivery sometimes over the analysis and design of this process. So there is a communication always between the developers and the customers. This is the agile software development model. Here each iteration involves a team working through a full software development life cycle that includes a planning, requirement analysis, design coding and testing. So in the first stage, the individuals and interaction should be happen. Then we have to develop a software collaborated with the client needs. So they get valuable comments from the customer. A key features of this method is the modularity, uh, then abstraction, encapsulation, reusability, maintenance, testing, design patterns, the agile methodologies, these are several classification, scrum, crystal methodologies, dynamic software development method, feature driven development, lean software development and the extreme programming. The agile method with the waterfall method. Agile method is a iterative based approach 
but this waterfall is a sequential based approach it can be broken into small modules that the designer can work here this model cannot be broken proceed with the one phase to another phase here the customer has the opportunity to get the early outputs but here it is not possible they can get the output only at the end of the project here it is considered an unstructured one when compared to this waterfall model smaller range projects can be implemented very quickly here all sorts of projects can be implemented in a high efficient manner during the middle of the project it is essential and it is possible to fix the output but only at the end after the testing of the product we can able to recover the error or getting from the customer feedback only we can able to modify the error in this waterfall model here the process of development is iterative based method but it is a phase by phase method here the documentation we, they are giving very less priority but here the documentation is a top priority one so this is that next type of that extreme programming so based on the determining the futures and the duration and cost it it's working module is divided into several task and they are working with the several task only here with the help of a uh, project requirements classified into various tasks with the help of the iteration rule we can get the customer input the customer testing rule so if they accepted means automatically they proceed with the final one or else again they make the iteration process then they have a meeting with the customer and the developers these are the main features client has been worked with the programming team it cannot be over two successive weeks here all team can work on all phases such as a specification design coding and testing there's no overall design phase in this method of extreme programming the main pros of agile is that customer satisfaction by rapid continuous delivery and the customers developers and testers they interact with each other at all times the delivery of the software is frequently face to face conversation is always available between them still it's having some drawbacks so it is difficult to access the effort at the required at the beginning of that sdlc also lacks the, the emphasis on necessary designing and documentation if the customer representative not clear means uh, we don't know what is the output they are needed sometimes senior programmers are capable of taking the decisions so when we can use this method means only when new changes should be implemented at very low cost and uh, to implement a new features the developers need to lose only the work of few days only this is the next process is that unified process so its framework is based on the unified modified language and it helps to draw the best features and it involves with the characteristics of various convolution process models subsection phase elaboration construction and transition phase so based on every phases they are having the requirements analysis design implementation test deployment and the configuration and change management and project management so in the inception phase they are having the vision document they initialize the use case model and business case then they have the plan of the project in the elaboration means they have the requirements and analysis model and they revised the, the risk list during the construction phase they design the model with the help of all the software components then software testing has been made transition phase they get the feedback after releasing the beta version of the software this is also a iterative development framework it is a risk focused one and it has a high risk factors to be addressed in this model it is a use case and a uml model driven now how to choose this software development life cycle methodology we are having a many methods so among the method for a particular software development which method that we have to develop that we have to choose so it is important to choose this method sometimes a project is a very simple and straight forward one uh, at that time that waterfall method is the best one so some cases if it is large means either go for the iterative model or the spiral methodology so as a developer point of view we have to understand the concept of all the methods that we discussed so based on all the criteria they can design which model is best for thank you for watching the video meet you in the next video till then it's goodbye from vijay